Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of PK's Lab. Uh, we're going to be continuing some rapid fire investigation stuff today. Uh, I had a couple questions uh, from folks on Facebook and on the YouTube uh, thread that were asking about some specific corner cases as to what's going on. So, what the heck, I, uh, I set things up and uh, we can go ahead and take some measurements. Um, I want to apologize for it taking so long. I've actually, this is the third time I'm doing this video. Um, when we're discussing the setup, I'll kind of explain why I had to do it three times. It's kind of embarrassing, but basically with the stuff I had at home was kind of okay to do the tests, but it was a little confusing if you didn't keep track of all the attenuation. Um, so anyways, I'm rambling too much. Let's talk about the setup. All right, let's do it. So... Here's how we're going to start our setup. So it's kind of similar to what we did for the first video. Uh, a couple changes are swap the camera. We originally had an HS1177 classic that was in there. Um, swashed, swapped it for a Foxier Falcor so you can switch between NTSC and PAL um, and, and see if there's any differences. Still using the, the Rode SMT-06 as the SIG gen. So we basically have the analog video signal going into the FM modulator and then <clears throat> a couple changes from here on out. We're going into a power divider and a variable attenuator. This is electronically controlled. Uh, we can control the attenuation from each path. And then that goes into our rapid fire. And uh, important thing to note, the reference plane is the front of the rapid fire. So when the variable attenuators both are set to zero, um, whatever value here is on the display of the roadie will be the power level right at the SMA connectors. Um, and we've got a couple different spots that we're monitoring with the, the oscilloscope. So we're looking at the raw video out from the camera. Uh, I actually tapped into the upper and lower receive modules in, inside the rapid fire. Um, so channel 2 and 3. And then channel 4 is the combined output after all the rapid fire sync reproduction and everything. Um, so here's what that looks like. Got stuff tapped into it. Comes out. Actually, let's take a step back. So we've got the Fox or Falcor. A little red guy up here. Comes in through the modulation input into the roadie. And then the RF signal comes out. That blue cable kind of meanders over here into the power divider. Comes into the variable attenuator. We can control each path independently. Comes out into the rapid fire. And then we're looking at it, the analog video signals Up over here on the oscilloscope with the cell phone there. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to try to keep this set up the same for all the testing in this particular video. Um, all right, so let's get cracking. So again, we've got our rapid fire module here plugged into our Fat Shark goggles. I've got a USB webcam uh, in the eyepiece of the Fat Sharks. So that's the upper right hand corner of what you see. You, you will see once I plug the module on. Uh, and we've got the two channels of the variable attenuator. So this is the one that goes to the upper rapid fire antenna, and this one goes to the lower one. Um, and then up here is our signal generator. So this is the power level at that reference plane, which is the front of the rapid fire module, when these attenuation readings read zero. All right, so let's turn things on and make sure things are working as we expect them to. We're going to run the cal real quick here. Turn off the signal. Actually. You'd figure I use this enough. Should know where all the points are in the menu. Then we're going to turn on our SIGGEN. So, in, in this case, both paths are calibrated with the same power level. Again, the, both attenuators are set to zero. So, so Demon 42 on 
YouTube commented, well, you can read, um, do, 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 you want to see the H-Sync and V-Sync signals, um, if it prefers one antenna or the other. Um, as many folks, I do myself, run in a symmetrical antenna setup, and we want to know if having the high gain antenna in one position or the other has an ad advantage or if it truly te treats both of the RF paths as the same. Um, and then Ryan was asking about where the sensitivity point is um, for the rapid fire to stop out putting the, the pulses step by, you know, step the power level down dB by dB. So, uh, yep. And then we'll also kind of look at the sensitivity in the different modes um, see if one of them's better or worse. Um, so yeah, let's get rocking. All right, let's start with Demon 42's question. If the rapid fire module prefers one of the antenna ports over the other ones, and I want to show you this um, via example because it's it's subtle and it's kind of a corner case where it does, um, but it's worth talking about. So uh, let's let's get rocking. So again. We've got four traces on our oscilloscope. The yellow is the output from the Falcor camera going into the signal generator. This is the output from rapid, the upper rapid fire module receiver. This is from the lower one, and then this is the combined output after all the signal processing. So, <clears throat> ideally, the pink trace at the bottom will be the best of the two of, of these, the green and the blue. Um, and you know this is the actual source signal it's generating and the oscilloscope is line locked to the output of the falcor so even if we remove the signal here and that's the button here in the lower lower right hand corner if i turn that off it means everything goes to static but the oscilloscope is still locked to that signal so all right let's uh let's get this funny little corner case set up so what I'm going to do is, I've got my two attenuators here in the lower left. Oop, I said, so he went to sleep. Um, we are going to toggle attenuator one between two points, and we're going to leave attenuator two fixed. So uh, what we talked about before, again, is the actual signal level going into the rapid fire module is this number, minus 50 dBm plus or subtract, you have to subtract this from it too. So in the case of the second path, we're at minus 88 dBm. Actually, we're at minus 88 for both of them. All right, so path number one, we're gonna toggle between a much stronger value and a much weaker value. And path number two, we're gonna manually step up and down. So let's, uh, let's get that rocking and rolling and see what we see. All right, so you can see we've got two stages when we look in the upper right hand corner with our fat shark goggle view. We've got a little bit of the staticky thing when the upper module has a real nice clean signal and then uh, a cleaner signal when there's no signal going into the upper module. And so this is the weird corner case um, where if your signal strength is stronger than about minus 90 dBm on the second antenna, it will do the signal combining of the two video inputs. So if I step it, the if I increase the attenuation on the second path by just 2 dB, um, so now the signal path here, the signal strength on the blue trace got worse, that's the lower module, you'll see the behavior is different. So he's actually, so there's, at this point, he's operating in traditional diversity mode, so legacy mode um, in rapid fire parlance. So it just switches back and forth. And keep an eye on this uh, pink trace. And I'm going to go ahead and step up or reduce the attenuation on the second path. I'm going to do it 1 dB now. And you can see, even in the Fat Shark goggle view, when we go to the state where the upper trace is clean, you can see he's doing like the combining where you can see a little bit of the, the flicker in the video. So there's a threshold there where if antenna 2 
is stronger than minus 90 dBm, he's combining the two signals all the time, even though the signal from antenna 1 is much cleaner than the signal from antenna 2. So there's like a little bit of a bias there to use the signal from antenna 2. So that basically shows us that that's how the rapid fire module uh, determines whether it should be combining the two video signals or not. Um, so this minus 90 dBm threshold on that second receiver is what it's using to make that decision. Um, and let's show what happens when we turn things around and we toggle the uh, second path from weak to strong and leave the first path fixed. So let's switch that over. So again, we've got 38 dB of attenuation here, and we're toggling the second path. So to drive the point home, uh, let's look at one last thing here. Um, we've got that minus 88 dBm signal going into the lower path and we've got a minus 94 and then the second one um, increasing the signal strength of the upper path doesn't help you so basically the if your signal strength on the lower path is past a certain point you're kind of in this middle zone right when you're in the minus 80s your signal's not ripping strong but it's not down in the noise floor either um, the upper path won't help you as much as you think it probably should. You can see here, as I turn it up, there's still like a little bit of image distortion. Is this notable? Yes. Does it, is it going to affect your flying? I highly doubt it because a little change in brightness or anything like that is nothing to write home about at all. Um, but it is something... Uh, notable in the behavior of what the wrapped bar module is doing. So let's look at what it would look like if we were in legacy mode. Oop. So again, we've got our lower module at minus 88 dBm and the upper one way stronger. We'll bring them down to you can see it just switches back and forth as we move the first one in and out signal. And we'll let's leave the first the upper path at that minus eighty eight number and move the lower one in and out. There you go. You can see it crossed over there. So, kind of cool, kind of interesting. So let's take this uh, question to the next level, kind of continuing on with what Demon42 was asking. So how does this affect the rapid fire modes and it getting sync? All right, so let's switch into mode one and see what we get. And just to be copacetic here, we're gonna power cycle things. All right. So, things to look out for. Um, we can kind of see we've got rapid fire sync because kind of the fuzziness of this second trace is not as fuzzy up here versus kind of the rest of it because it's artificially generating the sync pulses. Let's actually see, maybe if I make this a little bigger. There you go, you can kind of see that better. I just increased the vertical. So, let's see what happens when we attenuate everything at the same. So we're going to go put 55 dB of attenuation on the variable attenuator. So kind of like what we saw in the first video, rapid fire maintains the horizontal and vertical sync for a couple seconds, and it's only the vertical. And 
and then nothing. All right, so we're going to bring only the second channel up to minus 88 dBm. So it got sync there pretty quick. All right, put everything back to fully attenuated. We're only going to bring up the first path once we drop down to the noise. Again, also to minus 88 dBm once this stops. All right, so pretty symmetrical there in their ability to lock onto the signal. So I'm going to take the first path and step it down until we lose sync and see what that actual threshold is. So again, the lower antenna path is in the noise. Oh, there it is. So that was, let's say, minus 92 dBm. So we're going to fully attenuate the upper path, and we're going to bring the lower one back in at minus 88. All right, and we're going to do the same thing. Step it down dB by dB. So roughly about the same, minus 92, minus 93 dBm is where they lose the ability to maintain sync, which I think was also Ryan's question. So hopefully that was useful. Let's see what else we can come up with that's kind of cool. So we're still in mode one, and I wanted to show you that, that uh, rapid fire combining oddity at minus 88 dBm still exists in mode one as well. So this is the same test we, that we were running in mode two where we've got the second path fixed, the lower path fixed at a specific attenuation, in this case giving us 98, minus 88 dBm, and then the first path is toggling between a strong and a weak signal. And when it's got a really strong signal, some of the noise from the weak signal gets averaged in because of that threshold. Again, is it going to affect your flying? No. I mean, it's just something interesting. And let me step that second path down by a dB or two. And we can see that it kind of stops doing that and then goes into what essentially seems like legacy mode, where it's just purely picking the strongest path to do its work on. And the whole time seems to be maintaining rapid fire sync, which is good. So one of the other questions that was uh, was rattling around, I know it's been asked before, um, was how long does it take the rapid fire module to uh, basically resync if you change the video standard? So we've got the Falcor up here. And we're gonna actually gonna switch it. Run time. See if I can do this without making too many mistakes. There you go. That should switch it into PAL. And we'll just see what it does. And he's not very happy. Oh, he got rapid fire sync. So, kind of looked like it was the, you know, that full, I don't know, kind of feels like 5, 10 seconds. You guys tell me, looking at the timestamps, that same thing like when we go to sensitivity, how long does it take for the rapid fire to stop doing the overlay and the, the sinks. Yeah, there it is. All right, so that was NTSC to PAL. And let's go back the other way and see if it also does, takes about the same amount of time.
Yep. Feels like it takes about the same amount of time. I'll have to check the timestamps in the actual video. Um, all right. That's all that I can think of for now. Um, if you guys got any more questions, uh, more things you'd like to see done, more than happy to do them. Hopefully it won't involve a setup as uh, intricate as this one. But uh, hopefully that was informative and got some good news. Maybe up for next time. Uh, Joshua Bardwell was kind enough to lend me his, uh, I can't see this there, Furious Trudy X. So we can have something else to play with. Hopefully it'll be a collaboration video. And give him some material to put on his channel. Um, yeah, well, uh, see you on the flip.